This is the house of George. George was a very simple man. Every morning he would wake up and he would do the same thing he did every day. He would make pots and pots of jam made from all the things that he grew in his garden. After he made all his jam, he would clean his kitchen because making jam is a messy job. Afterwards, he would sit down with a nice cup of tea and biscuits and then he'd read one of his wonderful books and finish his day just like any other. That story sucks. Okay, okay, okay. This is Kevin. He is an evil genius. He reads lots of books and drinks chocolate milkshakes. Whenever anyone knocked on Kevin's door, they would unknowingly know the evil that lies behind it. Kevin would invite them in and make them a drink and offer them custard creams. Little did they know that these custard creams were drugged. When the victim was unconscious, Kevin would chop up their bodies and put them in little jars like little onions and beetroot and things like that. And then he'd clean up all the evidence so nobody knew that he did anything naughty. And then he would sleep a sound sleep, like soundly. Hmm, not bad. Okay, once upon a time, there was a guy called Barry, and he dreamed of making board game reviews. around my attic the other day because I'm starting to unpack things here in France and I found this and this cool and I found this yes it's a comic book that I wrote when I was about 15 16 years old and it's spaceships and stuff like that because I kind of like spaceships and stuff when I was 15 16 year old and I like comic books because reading a book was so much hard work I'd either read a book when I went to bed and it would send me to sleep and I'd forget where I was and then I'd forget what had happened just before so I'd have to reread. Whereas with a comic book, not a problem. I could just fall asleep at the end of a page and I'd remember where I was. Same with on the toilet. I read a book on the toilet and I lose myself entirely and then I have to stay probably a bit longer just to get to the end of the chapter. Whereas in a comic book, that doesn't happen. But nowadays I kind of like read more instruction manuals on, on how to play games while I'm on the toilet and in bed. That's a problem for the wife. But anyway, I want to talk about this game. Comics. It's a game where you're actually making a comic. <laughs> and then you're telling a story and then you're scoring points. Uh, don't switch off. I know it's a storytelling game, but don't switch off. This one has some nice little mechanics. At the beginning of the game each player will choose a colour and as you can see there are 10 colours which means this game goes up to 10 players. Uh, the game plays a little differently if there are six or more players because you play in teams of two instead of on your own. These tokens as you can see mark what colour you are so you leave that in front of you. You have these voting tokens which you will use to vote on the stories and then you have your scoring token which will go on the score track. Each player or team will get one of these sheets which will have a six panel on one side and a nine panel on the other side. They put this in front of them, they put their scoring tokens on the zero, you place these slow tokens in the middle, you place the sand timer in the middle and then there's this big deck of cards here which are all double sided and have this artwork on them and you deal 12 of these out to each player or team. The manual recommends that you play for three rounds so you tell three stories uh, but you can change this if you wish you can play less or more depending on your group okay you also decide beforehand whether you're going to use the six panel or the nine panel I would recommend using the six panel every time it just makes for a lighter funner experience. 
Um, and then what will happen is you will have to decide a title on a story. Now you have to decide on a title altogether because you're all going to write a story with the same title. The instruction manual comes with a list of titles like My Greatest Fear or Catastrophe or The Fellowship. Um, but as I said, you can use any that you wish. You can make one up or use a, another, an existing title of a book. And then you shout 3, 2, 1, go. And then you start looking through your 12 cards and you look for images um, which you think are going to make a good story which will relate to this title so uh, like so I'm just doing this quickly I'm not going to do anything here I'm just going to do that okay the first player to put fill in all their tiles and their on their panel they take the sound timer they turn it over in front of them and then all the other players have 90 seconds to finish their stories any player that has not finished their story will take one of these slow tokens um, and if you have any empty panels when the sound timer runs out, you just have to put any card random from your hand into that empty space or spaces. The rest of your cards you discard back into the deck and you shuffle them ready for the next round. And then the storytelling commences. The player who grabbed the sand timer will be the first person to tell their story and they basically turn their comic strip around for everyone to see and then they'll start telling their story, pointing at the pictures. So they would say from top left to the bottom right. So, oh, once a, one fine morning, uh, the, this Madame Ouvle uh, opened her window and started cooking dinner. She was a prim and proper woman who was married to a prim and proper president. Uh, on one particular morning she kissed him goodbye but little did she know he was running away to go and date another woman and shoot her afterwards. There you go, I just made that up because I just randomly threw these cards in. Once everyone has told their stories, that's when the scoring commences and this is where the game becomes interesting. Okay, because your scoring is going to work like this. Now here's where the magic of the game kicks in with its reviewing scoring system. Each player will have these five tokens, which they'll be using to assess each story, review each story that has been told. Now, it'll change depending on the number of players. If there were three players, so there'd be three stories, you'd give out uh, two tokens to each of your opponent and keep one for yourself. Um, and then again, in a five player game, you'd give out all five. What these tokens do, you have these two blanks, which are just nothing. They are nothing. They're no points, they're nothing. They're just. Mm. But you have this one with a heart. Now, the one with a heart means it's the most exciting story. You will give that to the story which is the most interesting, which has given you a lot of emotion. Maybe it was funny, maybe it was really scary or moving. Um, then you have this one here, the best composed story. If the story seemed to flow really well and just have a natural vibe and then nothing was like there was no juxtaposition of anything then you'd give that story that token and then you have this token here which is the most original story and that would be something which is just really creative and and fun then the scoring will commence once all tokens have been given out this is an example of a four player game once all players are given their tokens in you reveal them like so and the first thing you need to do is you need to remove all the blank votes. So like this one here, you remove it from the game. Well this player here has three, so they're removed from the game. Then you look for the majority in each category. Now you have your three categories. You have your most original. So in this case, this one has two, this one has two, it's egality, so they both get to keep them. Then you have the most exciting, which is the heart. Uh, there's two there, there's one there, so that goes, and one there, that goes. And then there's the best composed story. This one has three, so that one goes in the bin. Then, players will gain a point for each token which rests with their story. So this player here will get three points, this player here will get two points, and this player here gets four, and this one gets nothing. Then, each player will get two points for each of their tokens which is still in the game. So for example, the pink player will get two, four, six points. The red player would get two, four, six points on top. The yellow player would get four points on top. And then the green player would get two points. And then the game continues. You dish out another 12 cards, you choose a title, 
you do your stories, you do your reviewing, you score your points. At the end of the game, the person with the most points is the winner. If there's egality between the two players, you count up how many slow tokens each player has, and the person with the least slow tokens is the winner. And if it's a joint with the slow tokens, then you have a joint winner. <laughs> yeah. Comics is a board game that every Stanley wannabe should pick up and try. It's not too bad a game. But there is one problem, and that problem is written on this very box. The game states that this is a storytelling game like nothing you've seen before. There is the problem. Storytelling. As soon as you tell people that comics is a storytelling game, half of them run away blindly. Now, if they have said that this game makes you build a comic book and lets your friends judge it, that fits the criteria of what the game is and it shouldn't scare people away but should entice them. And that's what I've been doing. When I first started taking this game out, I used to say, yeah, do you want to play this? Oh, they go, oh, that looks cool, that looks really great. What is it? Oh, it's a storytelling game where you build it and that's it, they're gone. But now I take to the point of you build a comic book and then there's a competition you're judging. And people are interested in it. It is a storytelling game. So if you like storytelling games, this will appeal to you. It's kind of like speech and it's kind of like Dixit. It has that great feel. It plays well with families because you can make some family style comic books. Or, and it plays well with adults. You can make some adult style comedy, uh, comic books. And you can be naughty and you can create funny scenarios. You can create just real stories. It's, it's all in there. The game works particularly well as a party style game. It's actually quite fun breaking into teams of two and then coming up with a story between yourselves and then having to tell the story. One person will tell three images, the next person will tell the next three images, especially if you play with a six image panel. Um, and it's actually quite amusing and it does generate a lot of laughs. Although the scoring is a bit strange because each player is scoring individually. So yeah, you'll be voting on uh, the stories which are out there. Um, but the thing is when you get people judging your story, you'll have all the tokens. And it doesn't really explain very well in the rule book whether you look at the tokens first and then split them between you or you just split them between you before revealing them. Um, this is... But it doesn't really detract from the game. It's like it's like scoring in telestrations. It doesn't really matter. It's just there for the fun. But it is a, a very good scoring system. Whereas in the single player, if you're playing three or four or five player game, um, the scoring is a really good system. You don't have to be the best storyteller to win this game. In fact, I haven't won this game, and I consider myself quite a good storyteller here. But it is on the honest opinion of what you think of the story. You can score lots more points by giving the right token to the right story because everyone else will be doing the same. So therefore, this game has a really satisfying scoring system. But with the team game, it's, it's just for the fun and the laughter. Let's talk about the components of the game. Well, as you can see, they are pretty cool. No. Um, the rule book. The rule book is very well written and explains everything very, very well. It's a very small rule book. It's very colourful with the panels. The little boxes here tell you how team games work. Um, and it's very colourful. Very, very colourful and very easy to understand. And you can also um, scan this special code and download an app. I'll talk about that in a moment, maybe. Okay, um, the player board should be board instead of this thin cardboard, I feel. It's about the same kind of thickness as the playing cards. Um, the playing cards themselves, these very sharp corners, um, they might get damaged over time, but who knows. All the artwork, as you can see, is this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful comic book artwork, and there's so many things that you know, each thing can be used for, like this elf opening a present. Oh. The tokens are okay, they, they work, they function. Um, as I said, I love the idea of the scoring mechanism. Um, maybe the player tokens, that, you know, to represent your colour should be the actual colour 
of the player boards, which might be useful. Okay. Um, and then the box, which is the scoring track. It doesn't matter where you put it on the table, it's going to get knocked and scores are going to go flying. Okay, the app will let you do one of two things. You can create your own comic strip, either a six panel or nine panel. And let's have a look what we got here. Uh, here's one that I did. And as you can see, you can add your own captions on it. You take the pictures from the, the game and, and then uh, put them into a, a, a story. And there's a page. Woohoo! That's good, that, isn't it? And then the other thing you can do is you can learn how to play the game with these very fun cartoons which explain the game very easily and beautifully. Now I give comics a 7 out of 10. Okay, My score is a bit affected by the fact that I've played this game in French so I've had to tell my stories in French and listen to stories in French and my French is not trop bien. Um, so, um, that has a kind of effect. Maybe it would feel different if I was playing it in my own language, but that's something I'll have to find out maybe later on. But it's not too bad a game. It's simple enough to learn, plays quite quickly, it can generate a laugh when you're playing it in a group, and the scoring system is really good. Not too bad. But there you go. Until next time, I'm Barry, and play nice with your dice, because you only roll them thrice. <laughs>